And who? <laughs> Who's provided the food other than uh, Jesse's? You got anybody? Yeah, I got the Jesse's. Okay. Yeah. Please enjoy the food and the beverage. We're going to get started shortly. And we're going to have little trailers and stuff about the film festival. Then we're going to watch the Southside Project. And then we're going to talk with our lovely filmmakers. I see Steven, where's Angela? All right, there they are. Please get comfortable. Enjoy yourself. We start here shortly. Thank you.
So, you know, that can be explained a lot of different ways. People say it different ways. But we looked at it with uh, economic empowerment, education, equality, and energy justice. Uh, those three areas can be expanded on all night. But what we try to do here is talk about where a neighborhood has become alive, how it used to be, but how the people still have hope and pride and where they can be in the future. And we're trying to find ways to help. And we thought if we maybe put some of it on on the uh, film, or it's not filming, it's digital. <laughs> but uh, you know, in a couple of years, I would look back and say, we, we did make a difference. And motivate us to make a difference. So we're trying to do right. And we're just the Henry Ocean. There, there he is. Retiring from Georgia Power. Y'all don't see him in a little bit. But uh, the whole time he worked for Georgia Power, and the whole time I worked for Georgia Power, I'm in my 40th year. Uh, our, our slogan has been a citizen of wherever we serve. We are trying to make our community better. This is one little way, and we're not going to do it just a self. So I hope y'all enjoy what you see tonight. And I'm proud to work with, with my office and the county committee on hearing all the voices on how we can make things better. Thank y'all. Thank you. Now, if you're wondering why I haven't called up Stephen and Angel yet, because we're going to talk more with them after the film. Um, but as soon as we find this man to turn the lights down, we're going to get, get started. I said that knowing she was coming around the corner there. <laughs> What we're trying to do is create hope in our communities again. I told a, a friend of mine that, I said, we're trying to create hope again. He said, hold on. He said, I'm not sure some of us ever had hope. In the past, the south side of Valdosta had such a rich history with the flourishing business and entertainment community. It was the center of commerce, the hub of the minority business community, and underserved for such a long time. You know, we had a movie theater there, the Paddock Theater, my biggest book, that's where I used to go. But we had to go upstairs because we were not allowed downstairs. We had to go upstairs. And, well, that was after all the movies. The blacks would go upstairs and the whites were downstairs. As far as I know, the, the area has always been poor people who lived in this area. And that's probably evident by the railroad track that goes across the community. So this was probably a uh, uh, less desirable area. Uh, it's my understanding that the uh, people who lived in this area were like generational families. So you had like grandmothers, uh, children, uh, and children's children all living in the same house. The uh, area is, uh, there's not, as you can see, there's not a whole lot of large homes. Uh, mostly the shotgun gun type houses is what you see in this area. And that is also a uh, indication of their economic uh, ability. I had remembered, you know, streets full of viable businesses. Now there were either vacant buildings for the most part or no buildings at all. All around here, everything was vibrant, everything was live. We had entrepreneurs on just about every corner. We had Star Service Station on the corner here. We also had Dance TV Repair. We had Johnson Cleaners over. And the best barbecue we had was at CH Mission Barbecue Stand, which is behind the church. We had Washington Barbershop. My dad worked there and cut my hair and my brother's hair. We also had a cafe up at the top. 
my childhood memories of the south side was that it was a very well populated area there weren't like lots of vacant lots everywhere you looked and there were you know sort of wall to wall businesses there were also some industries down here warehouse type businesses like the tobacco warehouses and wholesale distributor type warehouses of various kinds so when I left to go off to college in 1972 the south side was you know just as active I would say commercially and probably more active industrially than any other part of town that I was aware of and we had a movie theater a liberty theater it was on the railroad track you know right in front of the railroad track but it was on this side of the railroads for entertainment you know we had places to go and uh the movie field at Force Base was open at that time and we had the, the servicemen would come to town every, most every weekend and they would, you know, this street and this area was full of errands, ladies, gentlemen, whatever, you know, and it was, we called it up the street, <laughs> but it was really great, you know, Ashley Street that we were talking about, but we were at, at home, we said, we going up the street tonight. Uh, that was the year I was in school. Uh, in April. My parents, my father worked at Moody Air Force Base, my mother was their teacher, but she was a teacher in the black uh, schools here. And we sat in front of our TV watching the funeral service for Martin Luther King all day long. So the following day, my mother sent a note to the teacher and told her I was out of school in honor of Martin Luther King's uh, funeral. And she said, how dare you, young lady? This is not acceptable. You march yourself to the principal's office because Martin Luther King was nothing but a troublemaker. He deserves to die. I was born the year Martin Luther King gave the I Have a Dream speech. One day right down in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. It was bad. It was, it was very bad. And you were isolated. And the part that was even worse, um, my mother was valedictorian of her class. She went to Spelman College. And she said that um, I was her guinea pig. She wanted me to go to integrate the schools. So she, she said she wanted me to go for two reasons. They had always said that black teachers could not teach and black students could not learn. And she wanted to know for herself if it was true that the teachers were not teaching properly and that black students were not learning. So that's why she wanted me to go to Salas Mahone that year. I, I think the state of race relations has improved some. Uh, we still have a, a, a long way to go. What do we want? Justice! What do we want? Now! What do we want? Justice! Some people who were probably thought to be superior at one time, uh, hopefully they recognize uh, some of the things that they did to the community, to the black community, that prevented them from uh, probably uh, achieving the things that they could have achieved. I mean, when you start six, you know, when you start six feet, uh, six miles behind someone, uh, it's going to be kind of hard to, to, to catch up. And that's, that's probably where we are uh, it, when it comes to um, black relationships, black and white relationships. Um, so um, I believe that the, 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 the country is changing. I, I've certainly seen change from when I was a child to now. Uh, when I was a child, we were not allowed to go to McDonald's or we were served out of the back doors of restaurants or some stores we were not even allowed to go in. Uh, now that is not the case. Uh, laws and, and, and norms have been changed. 
groups and that's not the case anymore in that in that perspective uh, yes things are better but there's some systemic racism and some things that have happened historically that still prevents uh, black organizations especially one like Southside uh, from uh, uh, you know achieving and, and gaining uh, the capacity to do uh, what it takes to be that village for our children we've seen a lot of change but a lot of it has been so frustrating that people believe things can be better but they just don't get better nobody ever seems to do anything about it but talk so i'm passionate about we're we're going to do something about it or try to it won't be due to lack of effort uh, we're, and like i said georgia power we tend to face things head on the storm's coming well we're facing this head on and we want to make a difference well, this is T.J. Antoff, and he's one of my young, or should I say, star students that we have been working and coming around with the Community Center from since 2011, 2012. And one of the things I'm most proud of right now, T.K. has, he's grown up, as you can see, he's working. Yeah, she just kept a lot of trouble. She showed us a different way Like We had a bunch of to do a lot of stuff like we could have did a lot of stuff different than what we did but we're just saying she just showed us it was different things out there it was more than what we see on this side and yeah a lot of people don't get to do that it was it was like she changed everything for me like school like, like school the reason Southside was started was because of the swimming pool because there was no area there was no facility where black kids could go and swim and learn to swim there'd be anywhere from 200 to 300 kids a day in that pool uh, a lot of kids learn to swim I guess from the 82 to 89 90 time frame I was very involved with Southside and the board we had a number of bake sales, we had candy sales, we had uh, rifles, and then we also had the Miss Black Round Oscar pageant. And the participation was overwhelming. And what the board agreed to do was not only use it as a fundraiser, but we gave the young ladies scholarships so that if they decided to attend college or whatever, they could get those monies to do that. And I believe my memory served me right, they were $1,000 scholarship. The swimming pool today is not in operations even though we hope to get it operating soon uh, we have uh, it's been a kind of trial and error uh, thing with the pool um, a lot of money has gone into fixing the pool and things like the underground plumbing and uh, pressure valves and filters and a lot of th things have been done uh, to the pool already but we hope to um, get the pool back open uh, so that we can, you know, the children can enjoy uh, what we enjoyed as children here in this community. I also recall the fact of how the parents trusted Southside staff, how they relied on Southside staff, and that they didn't want their children to go anywhere else other than Southside. We had as many black donors as we had white donors. Uh, that was so impressive. And of course, the United Way used us to, to do their annual fund campaign drive. Uh, we had uh, black we had black lifeguards. We had white lifeguards. We had some white swimmers. Uh, we were, it was open to the public. It was just by the grace of God and the hard work and sacrifices of many people in this community, both black and white, that kept this uh, recreation center open and, and going. The reason why I chose this location to do my promotion ceremony, I wanted to come home and, and have the community have an opportunity to experience where I came from and what helped me to become the Marine I am today. I mean, for me, Southside Recreation Center was everything. I learned to swim at the age of four. Um, I played basketball to football uh, to baseball right here. This recreation center during the summertime we had approximately 100 plus kids and it was this foundation from the director Mr. Oliver Bradley they taught a lot of uh, important things that helped me grow into the young man I am today it was all about hard work 
teamwork, and again, he had a saying, and that saying was all about be good or be gone. And to me, I took that to heart. It was all about continuing to work on my craft, being the best Marine I could be, so I can better lead my Marines, my family, and my friends. So a lot of that foundational input came from this recreational center and it was a vital part of this community. We provide underprivileged, underschooled children here in Lowndes County. We give them at least 500 book bags in Lowndes County and Brooks County. And the book bags are filled with school supplies that they need in order to provide their essentials through their day-to-day -day schooling life. We also help with mentoring and tutoring. We also do coat drives and we provide a beautiful Christmas Georgia's Power Funding helps nonprofits like myself, Beautiful Creation, to provide more and expand beyond our reach. We right now focus in Lowndes County and Brooks County, but we want to expand to other counties and give those children the necessity they need in order to succeed. Ms. Sandra, this, this is kind of, if you would, just kind of tell us where we're at, a little bit of the history of this place, because I'm seeing a big open field. And I came over here and you were going to show me around and I see all these cars lined up. Well, right now, these cars are people who are coming from not just in this neighborhood, from everywhere. They're coming all around from all over the city, really, to get some food. It's a place where we was doing nothing. And now we've opened it up a little bit. We've given people, they uh, can come get food. A lot of times, they didn't have any uh, idea how they would make it or have food or anything like that. The word is got around, they're coming back. They're actually bringing life back in this area. Hope is created with a job. Yes. And education, good education. Yes. And a few people that care, maybe. Let's just assume that having a job kind of empowers you. To, yeah, you got a money in your pocket. You, you kind of control your own day to day. So what's the biggest thing we could do for a little bit of economic empowerment? Just try to bring commerce here? Sure. So if, if we had employers coming here, say small manufacturing. Do we have the people to put them to work? Could we support a small manufacturer? I believe we could. I really do believe we, we could. We're going to have to educate them a little bit first and get them trained. But you know what? Once you get started with one, another one will follow. And we could get it done, but we need to have the incentive. We are a local nonprofit that is dedicated to the enrichment of youth in our community. Um, it's dedicated to culturally developing, providing life skills and quality mentorship to children who might be in poverty-stricken areas or at-risk communities. So where there's mentorship that might be absent, whether it's parental mentorship in the home, um, within academic institutions, that it's our job and responsibility as leaders within the community to step in and actually offer assistance where there might be avoidance. So today what we're doing is a community cleanup on a, a street that we've adopted as Kings United Street. And we come out here and we do community cleanups regularly, but we also wanted to have a fun day at the park. And it was important for us to actually showcase the, the type of things and the activities and the work that we do. So that way when we have sponsors like Georgia Power who can affect us in such a positive way, they see where their support is actually going. I was once that child who was looking for mentorship as well, the same type of mentorship that we're trying to provide to the children of our community. So of course, I was very very academically inclined. I had the opportunity to do a lot of great things through scholarships and things of that nature. I was influenced by the wrong things and this caused me to make a lot of improper and bad decisions during this age of you know 10 to 17 years old. So what I'm focused on doing is to find the next Tony who might have a lot of skills, ambitions and aspirations and make sure that I help them with the best decision making possible so they can reach their full potential in life. I feel like our country is digressing in a sense. Um, we are trying to come together, but we are still being pushed back. Um, I feel like 
we have prominent people who are trying to make a change and trying to help. And I would say in this instance, we have companies that are wanting to help and they recognize the segregation and they're wanting to do more to serve our minority, underprivileged um, nonprofits like ourselves. We are getting there. Change does not happen overnight. Well, we have such a giving community, but in a lot of ways, it's the same companies, it's the same individuals that give. We all need everybody small business, large business individuals giving and supporting each other. South Georgia has to take care of some of our own problems. Atlanta and D.C. can help, but if South Georgia is going to grow and prosper, it's going to be all of us working together across lines and across communities. And uh, we can really do it and pull it off if, if we find the unity instead of focus on the divisions. I believe that corporate America realizes that we are all in this together and what each one of us does affects the other. Um, we have to think of it as one. We are one. We have to think of it that way because it takes us to make the corporations run. We buy the goods. We, we buy the services. They in turn produce the services um, and the goods for us to use. But um, no, no, not one of us, not one sector of us is any more important or less important than the other. We go up together and we go down together. And I think that applies to corporate America, grassroots organizations, people's families as a whole. As you're seeing, the journey has taken a toll on the people of, of the South Side. America is the land of opportunity but it always doesn't work out that way for everyone. People will rise and fall on their own merits, but it's about building community as a whole. Financial literacy opportunities, housing development, even economic development. This task won't be simple and it definitely won't happen overnight. Let's continue to listen to each other. Look into each other's eyes ideas come to the table as a team those are worthwhile goals building hope building determination and a strong foundation it's up to us and you can be a part of it 20 years from now I hope people have forgotten the wrongs of the past there's no there's no future in the past uh, I hope people are judged on their merit. I hope there's equal opportunity, equal investment in all our communities. Now, business people are going to be business people. They're going to go where they make money. I hope some of those places where they don't think they can make money now, they see opportunity. I, I just hope we're flourishing 20 years from now. And, and like I said, everyone is born with hope. And at the end of the day, every kid that comes home from school, they got hope for a better tomorrow. Just they go as far as their talent will take them. That's, that's what I hope
film festivals, we couldn't do what we do without a partnership with other people, uh, such as Georgia Power, the Turner Art Center, uh, South Georgia Studios and the Film Academy, all these great people who are working here in this state. Can you talk about the people who came together to help make your project successful? Absolutely. So it kind of all just happened um, <laughs> at once, really. So when United Way, when uh, Michael contacted me about putting the South Georgia Diversity Group together, picking out some uh, people in the community, I just really wanted to, to really reach out to some people that I knew that um, really made an impact, and also people that I knew that, you know, from my past and um, that, that I knew that could reach out um, to the mass. And so when I have a strong relationship with Rick Power and um, I work full time with the Apple Space, I've been part of the sponsorship there. And um, me and Joe had a conversation about, you know, what, what is the community doing? So I reached out, um, I, I actually seen um, Miss Rachel, I want to see her somewhere on a post or something with um, Councilman Baby and Cody. I think they were doing the I Am Southside campaign. And so um, I went back and told Joe about it, and, and that's how we kind of went from there. We had a first meeting with uh, the South Georgia University Committee, um, and we all just kind of voted in, in unanimously um, on Southside Rec being the first project. And so it's, you know, it's just pretty much how it started, so. Wow. Okay. Now, I, I want to be upfront. Uh, Steve, who was with us during our very first festival, in fact, he would, there's a picture somewhere of us getting a check from George Power that very first year. Um, how did you get involved? I know that you and Angela worked for years in the first TV show and some other things. How did you get involved? Well, I've been doing a commercial video for about 15 years where I had to find projects. I had a chance to shoot. Um, for a lot of corporations here, shoot up in New York, go out of the country at one time. Um, I've always, you know, if you do that and you don't want to think maybe you could be a filmmaker, then maybe you aren't imagining enough. And of course, you know, as a filmmaker, I've been all kinds of poor faces anyway. <laughs> but in <it> humble, <laughs> um, but anyway, when the Black Lives Matter protest started here a couple of years ago, I think it was, my son Ben, I'm an activist and I was talking to him and I, I was kind of looking for a story there. Um, so I went downtown, filmed the protests, etc., interviewed a lot of people. I probably have 50 hours of film from that. But the story was being told nationally. So all I could do is rinse and repeat. And that was, so it's all still sitting there. And then, um, you know, Angela and I, Angela and I have known them all each other from all the time. And of course, Joe and George Power all kind of gave me a whoa. I can get a couple dollars for doing this. I can pursue this. And, and that's what happened. And through that, it was given, given me access to that community. And what I've learned is the community is not monolith. There are so many personalities. There are so many people there and um, I think their honesty was because they trusted Angela. They knew her so they trusted me. And so that's kind of how we got going. And to, to add to that point, I wanted to make sure that we told the truth. That was very important for me. Um, I'm a product of the South Side and I still live on the South Side. So um, even though I wasn't very familiar with the history on, on, on a lot of parts, I wanted to make sure that I spoke with people that knew the history. And so um, while working with Steven, you know, it just kind of all happened. Um, I have a, a, a business talk show, um, which we kind of focus, it's a non-biased talk show, so and he produced a lot of the, the shows for that. And um, I, I'm neither <coughs> left or right, I'm trying to stay in the middle um, on a lot of things, and, and that could be hard. But when I had the opportunity to do this project, you know, I, I knew that this would be something big for this area. Um, I knew that a lot of questions would be asked and wondering what direction, because every town have history, every, you know, um, everybody has an opinion. So, you know, that was a little rough for me in the beginning, but I knew that it was gonna make an impact, but I knew if I told the truth, and if I knew that you seen the truth, then what I had to work. 
Now, my own experience as a documentary filmmaker is you can never get everything in there. That's right. You can't address all the points of views. There's so much. I mean, one of the things that we talk about is when I think about the South Side, the two things that pop out to me are Ellis and the South Georgia Regional Library there on the South Side. Right. And you know, they're doing, they're expanding. You know, there's a lot, there are things happening. Right. One of the things that, that we wish you could have gotten in, we want people to know that, that maybe he's not there. What you just said, um, right, and, and that's one of the reasons, because this is my first doc documentary. Um, this is Steven's first as well. Um, this time around on, on, on the next session, where we're gonna, we're gonna have, you know, a associate producer to, to help someone that's already knowing what's in the know of the city and, and really in just different areas. And that's what I kind of wish that we had on this one because um, the South Side has a rich history. There, I mean, I mean, literally next door, uh, I can't remember, Lamont from San Francisco, the Sun, his aunt stayed next door to me um, when I was a kid um, on the Street. And so, um, Ossie Davis went to the old Lomax High School. Um, so it's, it's so much history here in this city and on the South Side. And I wanted to make sure that I tried to get a lot in there, but it was hard, you guys. It was really hard. Especially, I wanted to gravitate your attention. Um, an hour would have been too long, especially for me, for it being my first film, for one. And for two, how can we do it all? How can you put everything in one film, especially on, limited, but on a limited budget? And that was just, that's the honest God truth. We had a limited budget. And, Thank God that we had um, Georgia Power to even support this project. But a company like Georgia Power to even just do that's big in itself. Mm -hmm. And we had, I know we had a lot of questions. And how do we get Georgia Power? Were we working with certain certain people? No, it was solely Georgia Power and United Way supporting this whole project. And so we're just truly grateful for them. But as far as it just trying to get everything in, I was trying to take um, a bit of um, the, the elderly community. Um, that rich music, um, and even just that downtown business, because you can see for yourself that the business community is no more under the old past. But the one question that I was always asked that I heard two different um, sides to it, was it really the old past? Or was it before the old past? So that was, um, I, I wish I would have kind of had more answers on that um, if I had to redo this over again um, and interview more people on that piece, um, but that's really the main thing. Uh, I guess the only thing I have to say is that as a documentarian, I have my own prejudices and biases, to my belief, but I wanted to go in there and to tell the story of this community, not go in there and lead the conversation. And, you know, Angela's not that way either. We weren't saying, well, we're going to really you know, get this emotion going. So what you saw, I think, was the, I'd say, unvarnished truth. Uh, the filmmaker and the co-producer, we didn't try to insert or, or lead the story. Okay. Uh, before we uh, take some questions from the audience, just want to let people know, if you weren't, if you have friends who didn't make it out tonight, and I, I don't know everybody here, so I hope you have friends. <laughs> But anybody that didn't make it out tonight, uh, along with much of the other films in our festival, you can go to our website and be able to, to watch those films at home on your own TV or laptop or wherever else. All right. So is there anybody here that has any questions right here? Is Southside Rec part of the uh, Galvasta Parks and Recreation? Does it get funding from the city? And if it does, I want to know why the pool is not. <laughs> well, from, and I do not, I will, I will be honest, I do not know all of the history of that, the financial information part on it, mm -hmm. um, but I can direct you to the group for that. Mm -hmm. But um, I do understand that they, they are getting funding, mm -hmm. but that's a, that is a huge pool that they need to fix. Um, and the South Side does, um, about also the clouds on the red. It's not over the south side. <coughs> so I do want to make sure everybody knows they're not over the south side. Okay. And the south side starts right at the railroad track. Okay. 
Um, yeah, that, that's my understanding is that the South Side is separate from the LPRA. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, but my understanding is that they have tried to be supportive and that there are things there. Yes. That's a big project. Yes, it, it's it's a very big project, and you know, um, you know, we still we still need support for the organizations that we've seen. Um, we still need support for the organization that you've seen in the film. Um, and, and I also want to insert here: we um, have Hotel Hotel of Jangles. Um, he's supporting. Um, he wanted me to make sure everybody know that. We met with uh, Sheriff Hawk yesterday. Um, he's supporting um, and also getting some of his friends as well to support um, as well. So um, we may be doing we're trying to be open. Yeah. If you notice, um, and that's, that's another thing, sorry, but y'all see me. We try to be open so no questions can be asked. We always put out a press release. We put the funding out of what what you actually got. And one thing I've learned about grants, grants take time to get. So that's that's one frustrating thing for me. But you know, there's some good things that hopefully to come in the very, very near, near future. Well, I just want to jump in. If yes. you want to learn more about grants, this Saturday, we have a panel okay. on how to fund your own projects through grants and fundraising. Oh, wow. So you, you already have that. <laughs> uh, we may have an opportunity to uh, do a second documentary on criminal justice and uh, criminal justice re reform obviously uh, affects everyone but uh, uh, I say disproportionately some of the issues affect the minority community. Uh, also check back, uh, Mike, did we set something up so that people would be able to donate tonight? If, if people want to give, they can make it out to the United Way and, and put Southside or the Diversity Committee in the memo, and we're going to be throughout the year working and giving back that money into projects and agencies that help the Southside and the Georgia Towers support. And, uh, so if you uh, do want to get, make a check or give or talk to me afterwards the ways to get involved, uh, we're going to be working on that to give money back into these ways throughout the year. That's great. Thank you. And one thing I learned about working um, at Moody, no dollar is too small for an organization, and especially an organization that normally do not get funding. Um, and let's be honest, a lot of minority organizations do not know how to get funding. And so that's what I'm you know, hoping in the near future to try to educate more of, of minorities on how to receive funding and, and just the process. I'm still learning myself um, on certain things, so that's just really important for me to, to let the public know. We have a question over here. Yes. Um, this documentary, to me, represents health. You know, I'm, I've been in Dallas for 30 years, and so I'm a member of St. Paul, and so I've asked questions of people living in the area, what was that, how was this, and the other. My question is, now that these things have been uh, brought to our attention, eating an, if this is an elephant, and how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Mm -hmm. So are there any um, plans in the works for revitalizing some of the businesses. Some of the buildings are still there. And I think, you know, we have a lot of bright, gifted minds who still live in that community. And I think that if we make the children aware of the history of the South Side and plant ideas of what can happen, that it can be, I mean, it probably won't ever be the entire way it was, but I think some things can be done. And what I wanted to know is, are there any plans to maybe pick a project and flesh it out so that the South Side does <laughs> get life into it? Yes. She talked, talked about in the movie about what Georgia Power is already doing. Can you talk some more about that and sort of where this is going? So, so Georgia Power's funding was kind of like the first step. Um, and it, it took a while uh, to, to for that to go through uh, everything that's good sometimes it takes a while um, to happen so that was kind of like the first step uh, we did um, United Way uh, apply for grant funding um, to the state uh, I can't remember the exact name but we want to mention that well I, I can speak on that and that's what this film was is to talk about just to have that conversation and see 
Uh, we've applied on behalf of Southside Rec uh, for a half a million dollar grant to help revitalize the area because uh, it is a great 11 acre track and so much potential there. It's through the economic loss of the ARPA funds. Uh, there's also the big grant for Southside Library to be expanded. Uh, the, the mayor, the governor has released funding. Now we have city government people here in the room. Uh, but the, the, the re broadband bucket has been released and now the water sewer bucket of funding has been released. Lowndes County, City of Valdosta has done very well with those so far with for water and sewer and broadband, but the economic loss had, uh, and people applied all over the, the state. Those winners have not, or grantees have not been approved yet. So in the next two weeks, maybe, maybe by the end of March, we'll know more uh, whether some of those state funds come or local dollars. There's a lot of effort, of course, going into downtown development and business growth. It is talking about moving it over the overpass. Uh, and growing. Uh, we have wonderful city council uh, leaders and, and mayor that are pushing that, but it's, it's about the conversation to say it's going to take all of us business, government, faith leaders, nonprofits, and the community deciding what the community wants uh, and growing that. So that's, this, this was just a piece to get the conversation going, but there are some things in place that look to have a lot of potential. Because COVID has taught us we're all connected uh, a lot more than we thought before, and uh, you know uh, we're, we're you know all essential in, uh, to to the growth and the, the prosperity of the community. So uh, hopefully there is some good news coming. I mean, like I said, we've done great so far, Lowndes County and South Georgia, with broadband funding and water and sewer funding. A lot of exciting things happen, but we'll see if some of these other grant requests get approved and other opportunities and buckets for funding for, uh, but uh, we're gonna try. So, so just not, not only that, so I have a, um, um, actually two master sergeants on a new Yapper's base that's ready to, ready to bring their whole squadron to fix up some houses. So those houses that you see, if I had money for buckets of paint, we have the people to help them. So, it's, you know, it's about, I'm just gonna be honest, it's about donating five, ten, hundred, you know, because it's gonna it's I can assure you it's gonna go to the right place. So we have the hands to start helping. I mean, if you just just take some time to drive past South Side Lake area. Just take some time and go look. If you haven't already, just go look. It's 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 bad. So we, we have the hands, we have the people to do it. We just need that extra funding because it's gonna take all of us. It's, it's gonna take more than the city. Because guess what? We as a people gotta be one on one accord. And we cannot be fussing, we cannot be bickering. We have to work uni uh, in unity because just like you know Joe said, if we can we can't we can yeah, but history is important. But what, what are we going to do in the future? What are we going to do now to move us forward? And just like Miss Willis, and I'm so glad she's here, and um, Medora's best friend, so I've been knowing her. It's, it's a blessing for her, for me to see her here. Um, so thank you for being here. Uh, but as you see, this, this is the elephant in the room. Apparently, we had the whole city talking, wondering what was in the film. But you see the facts. You see the facts. You see the pool area. You see South Side Rift building. You see beautiful creations. You see what Kings United and and uh, Councilman Tuli. I was blown away to see all those people, white, black, Hispanic, in the line trying to get some food. I was blown away, and I'm a product of the South Side. I just live not even a half a mile from her from the place where she's doing it at. So that needed to be shown to you guys. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, I just want to say one thing real quick, which is, you know, it's great for us to look back at the past, but the future is changing for all of us. And as the film festival, one of the things that I recognize is uh, we have, I don't know, about a dozen or so of our students from BSU here in the audience. And we have quite a few that have come to my class that come up through the South Side. And the technology and what they're able to do to tell those stories, it's happening. 
It may not be right in front of us all the time, but that stuff is happening. And those people are, they are empowered and they are excited about what they're capable of doing. We're excited to be able to show your old film, but there's a lot of films that are being told, a lot of stories. And we may not see that stuff all the time. And I think a lot of us need to re-envision re what we think the future is going to be and how we can be as well. Right. Say, sir, did you have a question? Yeah. First, I'd like to commend Georgia Power. You all said it to you and all the game. You know, we don't have an exerted effort from everybody in trying to do things. A lot of the times, even with the food distribution and all, a lot of times people say, I don't need that. You know, somebody that perhaps needed. You understand what I'm saying? Time. Time as well as the money and the effort. And we go through the bureaucracy and the uh, protocols, trying to get funding and everything and all. But when we got something that we actually want for ourselves, we don't have a problem with coming up with it. Is that not right? Mm -hmm. I'm from Belfast, Georgia, and I've been a lot of places. And it just feels my heart for them to even want to come and illuminate something like that that's been in existing all these years. I've been here almost 70 years. You understand? And I know I'm not the only one that has seen and known that I've been in the Marine Corps, I've been all over the place, and then I came back home, and I've always tried to empower individuals, empower Southside. But then, too, the effort. We can save the whales and save women and save <laughs> Something being done for the vitality of us all. <laughs> of the whole. Not white, black, south, south, whatever. <laughs> then we're a little slow for them. Like we, we run into a bomb when it comes to that. This is what we need to discontinue in order to keep from going back to the past and present our future. That's right. <laughs> Black Voters Matter. 
Uh, and as soon as she's done talking to us, she's leaving for South by Southwest. If you don't know, that's a big film festival. Uh, you know, they, they pay for her travel and everything. We didn't, we didn't do that. <laughs> uh, but she's doing us a favor. And if you can make it out to that, I really think a lot of people will enjoy that. Uh, and I hope you guys can make it. Otherwise, uh, please come up and talk to Stephen and Angela. Please come talk to David and Alan and Carrie and Doug and anybody else that slipped in while I wasn't looking. Uh, thank you all for coming out tonight. What's that? The Grant Center. What's that? The Grant Center. The Grant Section on Saturday is at 3.30. We'll check. I'll, I'll show you exactly where our uh, schedule is so you can find out. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Thanks for coming out tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. something that need to be told it's a story that needs to be revealed and it's going to be a tremendous help for what we are trying to do and all parties coming together i think that this is this is this is right down the line of everything that you have been pushing and over the years that we've been working on this and uh but we started with the vsap program we worked behind three different mayors okay that was john freddie uh, 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 Gail, and 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 this, and this mayor that's in position now, and uh, we work we work behind two different managers promoting promoting economic prosperity, and this film is is very well put together, and I believe that that the truth is going to be revealed, and it's going to be a tremendous help in what we are trying to do. This is great for a local scale and an and, and individual local basis, but it helps. But what we're going to take it to is a different level. We're going to petition the federal government for the assistance that's really needed to empower the people so that we can put it back into the hands of the people that deserve it, that's been so underserved. And I want to commend you 
for everything you've been doing as the people uh, from the People's Tribunal, as a representative of the People's Tribunal, commend you for the amount of work you've done as to get to free press and being the black media in the area that covers all the bases. And it's a shame that you still under the trim on the cross pass for all of these years because you've been revealing truth. And the truth of the matter is that they didn't want you to, to expose certain things by talking to the children in the KJ case, okay? And I'm not trying to switch up on nothing, but the facts need to be known because there's a lot of things that you contend with that you shouldn't have to contend with because a lot of it is based on defamation of character, okay? But they didn't have no reason, none whatsoever, other than it was trying to conceal something. But this is revealing right here. And I thank you for taking the time. Okay, my question to you is tonight, I've learned over the years to accept what the majority does because we as black folks must learn to do for ourselves mm -hmm. what whites do for themselves. So I, I say that to say this. Isn't it strange that whenever we have meetings such as this, mm -hmm. they want us to hear them. That's right. But when it came to citizens' participation and you and other hands that I saw go up mm -hmm. who had questions to ask, the meeting was cut short. That's right. And I was extremely disappointed That's right. in 2022 versus 1992. Amen. And I believe that if they are concerned about putting on film what the taxpayers want, then they have to listen to the taxpayers that raise their hand at meetings such as this, as well as public meetings to let them wish it be known. You're right, you're right, you're right. But what we're going to do, we're going to raise the issue. We're going to stand on the issue. And we're going to take it a step further and beyond because what they did do is verify what we've been saying all the time. And they got documentaries of this. And we're going to take it to the next level that we can get somewhere that when people do raise their hand, that they're guaranteed to be heard. Thank you very much. Yes, sir.